The Economic Development Leadership Award is given in honor of George McDowell, who was an influential and active economic development advocate in Chippewa County. All nominees are individuals who have significantly shown advocacy for economic development in Chippewa County. So for example, over the last few years, we've worked with Chippewa County uh, and the Chippewa Valley Technical College to increase our articulated agreements so our students are able to get welding. We've started a laser production class. We do um, some ISO 9000 um, training for the automotive industry. We have a pretty vibrant science and math program and we know that those things have to work together in order to prepare the workers for the workforce. The 2017 McDowell Economic Development Leadership Award goes to Dr. Mary Randall, Superintendent of Bloomer School District. Dr. Randall has put forth outstanding effort to achieve success for Bloomer youth through a number of programs and efforts and has focused on being a communication link between the needs of local businesses and the education community. Well, the school district of Bloomer is a small community of about 3,500. The school district of Bloomer serves about 12,000 because we have 12 townships which we serve surrounding our district. And our district is comprised of three schools, a middle school, an elementary school, and a high school. And our total enrollment has grown over the last nine years to about 1,200, a little over 1,200 students. All right, well, we have over 90 teachers and about 40 support personnel. There are a lot of summer opportunities because of the grounds and building work that has to go on. Um, during the year, our teachers and aides are employed about 10 months out of the year, many more than that because they teach summer school classes, which runs a six week period. So over the course of the summer, they're gone for about four weeks. We have encountered some major building projects in our, in our community since 2012. We've built uh, a new elementary school, many ball diamonds, um, and we're adding currently on to our middle school. Uh, prior to that, we added on to our visitor locker room and team visiting area. So when visitors come, they're comfortable at our stadium. So we've had lots of opportunities to bring employers and their employees into our district and help that economic growth of our community. Um, in 2010, our community recognized that having a future growth plan was very important for the success of our community. And so we got together with our strategic planning committee, as well as SDS Architects and a, a Rettler Corporation, and designed a long range growth plan for our district. And that is surrounding our facilities and the potential growth for our community to grow uh, with populations for students. So our uh, population has actually grown over 300 students in the last nine years, and with that came the need to expand our schools. So we retired an old elementary school and built a 92,000 square foot elementary school in 2012 and opened that in 2013. Following that project, we were able to have enough money left in our uh, contingency funds to build four beautiful brand new ball fields, which brings a lot of people into our community and helps our local businesses and having those visitors to our community gives us a chance to highlight those kinds of opportunities we have for future business growth as well. We also added on this year to our middle school because as our youngsters roll through our elementary, we know now that they have to have enough space at our middle school. So we will be completing the expansion project of our middle school this uh, spring in 2017, and we're really proud to be able to say we'll have our dedication sometime in early July, and we welcome everybody to come to that. We did expand our uh, athletic fields because our Bloomer Blackhawks are very competitive. So we offered some expansion to our visitor seating on our stadium, um, included some growth and expansion of our visitor locker rooms and our bathroom facilities for our visitors. And then as well as um, incorporating some of our um, work on like local tennis courts and that sort of thing, we also partner with our city on our high school baseball field. So we've got a lot of things in the hopper right now as far as growth for our community. Future plans include growth of a new high school that uh, is set to take place sometime in 2022-23. Um, and I'm looking forward to the further development and growth of our community as we see that those populations coming to our community is so exciting. Our training for our staff uh, begins uh, it, what takes place throughout the whole year. And our staff is trained on classroom interventions, um, curriculum and instruction, 
And also we work with our business partners to listen deeply about what kinds of skill sets they need for their, the workforce that's coming into their, to our local surrounding communities. So for example, over the last few years, we've worked with Chippewa County uh, and the Chippewa Valley Technical College to increase our articulated agreements so our students are able to get welding. We've started a laser production class. We do um, some ISO 9000 um, training for the automotive industry. We have a pretty vibrant science and math program and we know that those things have to work together in order to prepare the workers for the workforce. So we work very carefully with our local business leaders, um, the Bloomer IDC, um, the Chippewa County Economic Development Corporation to listen what do our employers need and require so we can try to prepare our students and our teachers to train our students in the skill sets that our students are requiring. Currently we're working with uh, the Chippewa County in trying to develop some tiny homes and so our students are in a, a construction project in that developing tiny homes for that uh, project and then we also do some local construction projects. We have um, worked with our local electricians, we've worked with some of our uh, local contractors, um, our business partners, PMI, helped bring the Explorer program into our community, and so we've been working with PMI on some of those local training opportunities for not only our uh, teachers, but also our students, because they need to know training opportunities are out there, and the stronger of a learner that they are, the more employers are going to want them. Employers want creativity, they want um, well-trained, good thinkers that can work collaboratively together to make their businesses stronger and we're working on that trying to develop not only our teaching staff but also our students to help them be successful graduates. Uh, in the school district of Bloomer we have developed a one-to-one -one initiative. This year we launched it into the ninth grade and the eighth grade. Next year our plan will be to expand the Chromebook initiative, the one-to-one -one initiative, into seven through twelve and so each student will be provided with that technology. It's a little less about providing the technology and more about providing them the resources to help them be strong, creative learners. So teaching the staff on how to use those Chromebooks is very important. Also the care and uh, opportunity that students have to use the technology is a privilege for them. Um, we felt it was very important to be able to provide technology to our students because some are not able to afford it. And creating an equal playing field for all of our children was important. We also incorporated um, some new technology in our technical education. We have a pretty vibrant CAD program as well as our um, laser production class which partners in with our artistic um, creative graphic design program. So these uh, partnerships that we've created even within this framework of our school provide some technical opportunities for, this, for the children. They're working on both the Apple and the PC. They're bringing in some uh, laser work with a creative thing we call Hawk Hardwood so the kids can take in production uh, requests and produce a product for their constituents and so they're learning what it's like to be a good um, business partner listening to the complaints and the praise of the people who they take orders from. Um, as far as other technologies that are available in our district we have active computer labs for our youngsters. We have iPads, for our, we have iTables. Um, students the tech, see the technology changing all the time and our goal is to help provide the best technology that helps them be successful but uh, not get too out there because technology needs to be researched first before we bring it into our district because our taxpayers are counting on us to make good decisions. As a member of our community, it's very important for me to see our students be ready to be business, college, or career ready. And so I spend quite a bit of time touring some of our local businesses. I, I go with our IDC into these different businesses, visited in Chippewa Falls, visited in Eau Claire, in Bloomer, listening to the needs of the qualities and characteristics that our employers would like to see with employees that they have. So in 2009-10, we implemented a character education program for our students. And we include things like citizenship, uh, perseverance, courage, um, commitment, um, what, it, what it is like to have um, basic character skill sets that employers want to see, being able to collaborate, being able to communicate. And all of these qualities and characteristics we focus on in monthly 
character lessons for our students. And we promote um, safe, respectful workplace and school settings, which is what all employers want to see. The hardest thing for an employer, I believe, in listening to our employers is not being smart, but being able to get along with each other and be good, receptive um, employees who can adapt and change and, and grow with their companies. And so if we can produce those kinds of children for our workforce, not only are our schools going to be stronger, but our community and those future employees are going to contribute to the growth in business and the entrepreneurial spirit necessary to be able to keep business growing in our community. As a nominee for an award, it always is a little humbling because the work that is expected of you is what you take and you, you have as your, your goal and mission for your organizations, to make them stronger, make them better. And in education, that's an expectation. Um, my work with our community, not only our, our city government, but our local area businesses, um, has been actually helped me grow. And so to be able to be recognized for an award is really a tribute to the people I work with. It isn't really about me. It shows the partnerships and the willingness and the opportunities that we have to really work together to make our community stronger. And so the award really doesn't just go to me. It goes to our entire community. Congratulations to Dr. Mary Randall, this year's winner of the Economic Development Leadership Award.